So up next, as promised, was the water slide competition. So they replay from last last month, JYD pantsing and branding Jimmy Hart. Yes. Now, Jimmy Hart wants revenge, but as uh, I think it was Gene who pointed it out first, he cannot fairly compete in the ring, which is true. So he has challenged the junkyard dog to a water slide challenge. So now as you explain this here, I need to paint a picture for everybody, okay? So they show footage of Jimmy Hart on national television in front of millions of viewers on NBC. He's in his little red undies, and JYD is branding his ass with a branding iron, okay? Imagine the humiliation, Vinny. Terrible. So Terrible. They, go, they go from there to literally the top of the water slide, and Jimmy Hart is explaining... Everything that you just said to Gene Okerlin as he's sitting in a fucking inner tube and right next to him, also chilling out in an inner tube, is the junkyard dog. Yes. It's so fucking ridiculous. First off, that like Jimmy is so mad and humiliated. That his solution is we're gonna go down a water slide, but I'm gonna go faster. Okay. Yes. And then the best part is like he invited Dog, and Dog's like, all right, brother. And so he goes up there, and he's in a fucking inner tube to... It's just, everything about it is absolutely ridiculous. But it was great. So Jimmy explains, it's true. I cannot out the junkyard dog, but I know I can beat him here, and that will prove I'm a better man than the junkyard dog. Because you can go down a slide faster. <laughs> Because any, whichever field it be that the heel chooses, if he wins, that proves he's the better man. That's fantastic. And Dog, of course, accepts any challenge. He mumbles something about those little red undies. So, yes, it's a race down the water slide. There's not a lot of technique to this. Well, what happens is they say go, mm -hmm. and JYD goes, and Jimmy Hart doesn't go. Yeah. And then he goes like... Two seconds later, yeah, the, he clearly loses. Jimmy lost this race within the first second. And, and that's, that's, that's the whole contest. Yes. So then they go to, to Jesse and Terry Funk. Now, keep in mind, Terry Funk is challenging for the World Wrestling Federation heavyweight title later in the evening. But here, they're analyzing a water slide competition. Yeah. And Jesse says, <laughs> I believe that Jimmy had a friction problem. Yes, he, he he held up the shoes that Jimmy Hart was wearing on the water slide and then claimed it was due to a a, a, a poor starting. He, he got screwed at the start, is what Jesse said. He got screwed because he wore fucking leather shoes down a goddamn water slide? <laughs> That's right. That's, That's his right. own fucking problem. Then he Well, Brian, he's a heel, you see. He's an idiot. So he changes the subject quickly, and Hulk Hogan had just appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated, which is a very big deal at the time. And Terry Funk promises he... He's going to be next on the cover of that magazine, so he's here to make sure he gets a good tan. And if he doesn't get that cover, he's going to brand everyone. And I don't know if it was just because things you remember things differently from when you were younger, or you looked at them differently, but when I used to watch Saturday Night's main event when I was young, the challenger would be doing a promo like this, and I'd be thinking, man, I wonder if this fucker's going to win the title tonight. I didn't think fucker at the time, but... That, that would have been news. That was my thought. God, is Terry Funk going to win the WWF championship here tonight? Nowadays, it's like they've they've devalued the title so much that I don't give a... I, I can't even remember the last time I gave a, gave a fuck about a title change. Maybe Daniel Bryan in 2014. But like, other than that, who cares? But even watching this in 2020, I'm watching Terry Funk's promo, and I, I had that feeling I had when I was little. Man, is Funk going to win the... And I knew he wasn't, I was but say, I still thought that. Like Next time we're betting... Man, is this fucking guy going to win the title tonight? I'm excited. So, Gorilla Monsoon then narrates a clip of Hulk Hogan versus Terry Funk from Denver in winter of 1985. Ugh, the deep winter of 85. So, what we see is Terry Funk hitting Hogan with a branding iron and branding him in, as somebody said, I guess Gorilla said, the pectoral muscles. Yes. And then they, they tell us that Jimmy Hart and Terry Funk were the winners of the match, but they did not win the title. Well, what happened was he got 
Terry Funk got the branding iron. The referee was distracted. Funk hit Hogan. Hogan fell through the ropes to the apron, but not the floor. But he was outside the confines of the ring, and that was a countout, apparently. Huh. Yes. I had no idea. I was The no, footage was no, awful. Yeah. So Hogan, back here in Florida and on Saturday night, says he has a special surprise to ensure he does not get branded again. The junkyard dog will be in his corner. And he brings in JYD, and they slap hands, and they're all chummy, and... Uh, it's Hulk Hogan in the 80s, and he introduces his new friend, and all I can think is, don't turn your back, Hulk. <laughs> this man's going to turn on you. They always do. But the dog vows to keep an eye on Jimmy real close. Hulk Hogan versus Terry Funk. This match begins with, like, the best spot I ever saw, and I can't believe nobody has ever stolen this oh, in man. 34 years since. It's the simplest but best thing. So Hogan, who, by the way, is in teal and red, a total eyesore, but he, uh, he Hogan pushes Funk into the ropes, and then Hogan does a drop down. Funk jumps over Hogan, but in the process, loses his balance, hits the ropes on the other side too high, and falls out of the ring. He is all frustrated and upset. I'll show that fucker. I can take this, too. He gets back in the ring. Funk pushes Hogan into the ropes. And this time, Terry Funk does the drop down. But Hogan is no fool, and Hogan is no, no clumsy oaf. So Hogan, as running, just runs and plants his foot right on Terry Funk's back and keeps running. And Funk cries out in pain, Ah, oh, my back! And as he's writhing there, Hogan hits the uh, ropes on the other side and runs back and steps on him again. And Hogan, Funk screams, and Hogan just keeps running. They do this like four times. He does it four times, and each time Terry is crawling closer and closer to the ropes... And Hogan is still stepping on him every time. And by the fourth time, Funk finally gets out of there. And Hogan stands in the middle of the ring and he pumps his fist. And these fucking fans over this stupid spot, they go so crazy that the hard cam is fucking oh my God. shaking. I thought the building it's like was like there collapsing. was an earthquake. <laughs> it's the best, scariest thing out of this goofy, goofy, goofy spot. It was so awesome. So now I got to talk about some other big things here. All right. So Funk's bumping all over the place, and he finally gets the heat with, of all things, a headbutt. He did, yes. <laughs> he grabbed Hulk and headbutted him, and that was that. All right, so he goes to work and everything like that, and he gets some he gets some tape, and he wraps around Hogan's neck, but then puts on a hold so the ref can't see the tape. Yeah, Classic yeah, the, the, old school. Yeah, the chin lock over the, the neck so to hide the tape. So Hogan goes to suplex him into the ring from the outside. And as he lifts him up, Jimmy Hart hits Hulk Hogan in the gut with the branding iron. And Terry Funk falls on top. And I thought, you know what? If, if the Vince of today changed places with the Vince then, Funk would have won the title here. Yeah. Like, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. To get heat. <laughs> to get heat, yeah. <laughs> like, Hogan would have had the title for, like, you know, two months and then lost it to some heel... And then, like, he would have won it again, but then lost it to some heel two months later and, like, never got a, a run. It's been all about getting heat. So I'm, like, watching and singing, oh, my fucking God. Like, I know Funk didn't win, but he's going to win right here. <laughs> and then Hogan gets his foot on the ropes. Yeah, now, see, I watched this, and what I was expecting was the ref would count three and then spot the foot and then wave off his own count. But no, they didn't even Not do that. Not even that. He just counts two and stops and points at the foot. So they... they, they Hogan wasn't beaten. The ref wasn't incompetent. No. The heel is just an arrogant dick. So <laughs> he... Overconfident. He gets his foot on the ropes, and the ref stops counting, and Funk is furious because he thinks he's won. First he gets us to celebrate. Yes. And then the ref corrects him, and now Funk's the one to tantrum. So Funk is there yelling at the ref, and JYD takes out Jimmy Hart outside. He gives him a headbutt, so Funk is dead. Or, uh, Hart's dead. So Funk's yelling at the referee... And all of a sudden, he turns around, and Hulk Hogan hits the big fucking axe bomber. Oh, I was so happy. He kills him with his axe bomber, and then he covers him. There's no leg drop. There's no, no Hulk up. There's no three punches. Well, he, there's he no done, big boot. He had done the Hulk up earlier. Sure. But, yeah. So he, he hits the axe bomber, and he pins the guy. Oh, I was overjoyed. This match was actually really good. Yes. This was Hulk Hogan's physical prime 
pretty much. Like you know, as a as a as physical wrestler, like he was really good in this match. Absolutely. Which is which is very impressive because we've said it a million times. Like it's hard to be babyface in peril when you're like six six and you're fucking three hundred pounds. Yeah. But you know he's a babyface in peril here, and he was in he was in a, a like he was down for the count. But he got his foot on them damn ropes, and then he hit that axe bomber, and he got the pin. I love this match. This is fantastic. Now, two things. Uh, one, did you point out that when Hogan was suplexing Funk into the ring, that Jimmy actually hit Hogan with the branding iron? Yes. Okay, you mentioned that. That's that's important because even though Hogan wasn't beaten, the closest he came to being beaten was when the heels cheated, and he he even overcame that. But then just the finish as Ho- Ho- you know JYD takes out Hart. And Funk is ranting with the referee, and Hogan is just leaning against the ropes. It's almost like uh, Nakamura in the corner. He's leaning against the ropes and pumping his fist. And I think we talked about this last time. I asked, did, did Hogan ever try to get the Axe Bomber over the U.S.? And at least once, there is at least one time Hulk Hogan won a WWF World Heavyweight Championship match with the Axe Bomber, which, if you don't know, is just a big clothesline. He just ran a big clothesline, a big ass running lariat, and he dropped this dude, and he covered him. The place went nuts. This was for this time, for this audience, for the show, a perfect match. Loved it. 